our defense is young enough, we can play man coverage all game long. They don't have enough burners. Baltimore doesn't have enough talent to really just wear us out. We can't give up that deep pass like we constantly did in weeks two, three, and, you know, last week. I hope our Niners go. I hope, I hope our Niners win that night because, you know, if we can just build off that positivity that we had last night, even though we lost the game, I would still think that, you know, we're going to have some um, some fire in our bellies and be able to, be able to get that, um, that flat go offense. Are you listening? Niners! Damn. Ah. <laughs> Come on now. You knew I was not about to give up on this season. In fact, you tuned into this channel knowing that I was going to pump you up. And I am not about to disappoint you either. May I make a suggestion? If you're still feeling depressed, if you've got a recall, <laughs> NFL.com, go back and look at the Seattle-Cincinnati game. You know, I'm, sometimes I wonder, do I enjoy watching the 49ers win or do I enjoy watching the Seahawks lose the most? It's, I'm just still a toss-up. Did you see the faces on those guys? You, you know what, though? I have no reason to laugh about that because we lost in a similar fashion. All right, fine. But we took a lot of good things away from that game, and we can really feel good about things going forward into the season. Number one, Colin Kaepernick was looking large and in charge. Remember before the game how Jeep Chris was saying we have some, some major adjustments we've made? And then they came back down to, well, we've made some changes. In order to avoid losing face just in case things don't work out well, you found out what the changes were, right? What they've done is stop trying to force Colin Kaepernick into being a pocket passer, get rid of the reads and trend, everything else and progressions, and just let him be Colin Kaepernick. That, that I don't mean anything just too basic, but they gave Colin set plays, one after another. The wonderful thing about this is, now you put more emphasis on the entire offensive core. We've got some veteran receivers out there. They can get the job done. Just make sure Colin hits people. The dude was throwing through windows that tight. I said, oh, look at Colin. What's, what's, what's come over him? It was a beautiful thing to watch. Here's what we can take from Colin learning what he did in this crash course with Kurt Warner these past few months. His, his technique on throwing, it was there. He threw some beautiful passes, man. I was so proud of him. Here's another thing. That cocky, arrogant, bicep kissing dude that we've all known and loved from a year and a half or so ago. I believe he's back. Did you see Colin on the sidelines? He was had a big smile on his face. And the press conference. How exciting was that? <laughs> Colin standing there talking about going 12 and 4. What? If Colin Kaepernick is that confident, ain't no way I ain't gonna believe in him. I'm going with that. I, I got a feeling good days are ahead for us. Ooh, I can't wait till Sunday. <laughs> And speaking of which, are you concerned with the Ravens coming up this weekend? I mean, come on, man. The Ravens suck. The Ravens, the only reason, the Ravens are supposed to be an 0-5 team. The only reason they're 1-4 is because of a stupid mess up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That kicker. This is a dude that can stand on the beach and couldn't kick a beach ball into the ocean. He had three opportunities to win that game. The Ravens are supposed to be 0-5 right now. So, <laughs> what is the fear? We can beat these guys. They got all kind of people on the IR. It's like watching a MASH movie. Justin Forsett, Steve Smith Sr. These guys may not even play. So, I don't even know how we can lose this game. What I'm thinking about is what we should do on offense to beat these guys. Let's not be worried about anything at all, man. Open up the playbook and just run everything at them. I want to see players out there. In fact, let's get 
Since Reggie Bush is never going to be healthy again, let's face it, man, Reggie Bush is never going to show up again this year. If he does come back, it's going to be just four minutes so he can get hurt again. Let's go ahead and employ Jared Hayne right now. Get him out on some, some flare outs, some screens. Get him involved so he can get used of the pro set in the NFL even more so. We already know he can punt return. Let's get him out there where he can start doing some real damage. You got Hayne. Hain and Carlos Hyde punishing, because both these guys are brutal runners. <sighs> I'm telling you right now, I got it all planned. <laughs> you know, here's the best part about it. An aerial attack will work for this reason. They're so desperate in Baltimore, they've actually hired Sharice Wright. <laughs> Sharice Wright, can you imagine how Carlos? Oh, Colin's eyes are going to get this big as soon as he sees Wright run out on the field. We can beat these guys by using any number of offensive situations. Oh, Yo! Still mad about that Giants game, oh, no. but let's move on. Because mm. like Cap is saying, we got plans on going 12 and 4. Yeah. We beat the Ravens by keeping Joe Flacco off the field, Ron Bo. Ball control. I mean, El Guapo Baltimore to death. <laughs> By the fourth quarter, all the Ravens will want to do is get the hell up out of Santa Clara. Can I get an amen? Amen! The win streak starts this week. Damn fool, Oddsmaker's got us at three point underdogs. And you know how I feel about dogs? I'm gonna place a bet on this one. I'm serious. Shall I lay some cash down for you? No, man, they broke me up a bet and I quit. All right, I am gone. You know what? MC's overcautious, and I understand his fear because the fact is we're one and four. You got to be real careful. Don't even worry about it. I'm very confident about this game. Let's go out there with a balanced attack. That's what worked against New York. That's why Carlos Hyde had as many yards as he did. Because remember, the Giants are supposed to be the number one defense against the run, and Carlos stacked up 92 yards. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick was hitting him at will. I'm telling you right now, not to worry. I want to know though, what is your offensive plan? for this weekend's game against the Ravens. Let's check you out. And getting back to the state of Utah with my boy Nate and Nate Nair going over some very vicious things from yesterday. We thought we would share with you really briefly as we move on into next week with Nate. Anything you want to, I want to say there was one thing I really appreciated seeing a post of yours on Facebook specifically stating what some other people are saying too. There was no conclusive evidence that ball was it was not a clear frame in there that they showed us on television that showed that, that ball was fumbled. I, I agree. Uh, and a lot of people were saying, oh, I saw it. I, they must have one hell of a TV because all I saw was blurred vision and assumptions of whether it rattled between his arms and his chest or whether it bounced off the ground. I mean, there was just, once they called it an interception, there just there was no way there was enough there to clearly overturn that call. <sighs> there's, just, there's just no way. <sighs> there wasn't a clear enough angle. But you know, your but, ears are getting hot again like they were yesterday. Oh. <laughs> I'm right there with you. My heart's fat bounding, but it's just. But you go back and you go back to the 20 yard scramble that Eli had, and then the Shane Vereen and the missed holding. The, the no, no, I mean, that whole drive, that ball never should have got to the 50 yard line, and we just, man, that zone coverage we're playing is horrible. Huh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. Well, okay, we're going to talk about that now because we've got the game coming <laughs> up with Flacco. Flacco is struggling right now like crazy. He's his QBR is it's 33 point something. The guy is not looking like the Joe Flacco that took us out in the Super Bowl. Do we need to be worried about that, or can we look forward to Game Two or our second victory? The only reason we need to be worried is because they're one and four like us, and they just lost to the Browns in overtime. <laughs> but on the other hand, they have Justin Forsett and some guy named Aiken. Yeah. And maybe Steve Steve Smith Jr., who's probably not healthy. They don't. This will be the first time we're not facing a multiple threat offense. I mean, we had to deal with Randall, uh, Vereen, um, Beckham Jr. I mean, that's hard for us to cover. Maybe I don't know. Maybe if we can, if our offense will show up and we go back to the uh, man defense that we played in Green Bay, maybe maybe we can win. And, I don't know. I'd like to think this is the, this is the first game of our winning streak, but you know, you everybody's got to show up. Exactly, but you you, you bring up something that one, I've been wondering about this since game two, because I know we just recycled the same game plan when we went into Pittsburgh. But now 
Ever since that game, there's been a different game plan. Did you see any of them that were actually effective? And would you apply any of those for Flacco and company this week? Or you got a new plan? You know, the only one that worked was against Green Bay. We held Aaron Rodgers to 17 points and really shut down Eddie Lacy. And we played man coverage almost the whole game. Our defense is young enough. We can play man coverage all game long. They don't have enough burners. They don't have enough or they don't, Baltimore doesn't have enough talent to really just wear us out. We can't give up that deep pass like we constantly did in weeks two, three, and, you know, last week. Especially last week. So in that case, yeah. I'm hoping you keep our edge rushers the same. And I don't know if Ahmad Brooks is going to come back this week. It really would be nice. But keep the edges rushing. Don't set them back in coverage. Everybody's tired of that, and it doesn't work anyway. Maybe that would be effective. And, you know, I, and as, far, as a matter of fact, game plan for us. Now that Kaepernick has suddenly returned to the glorious Kaepernick of old, I, everybody says, oh, well, don't get excited. The man's inconsistency is like as famous as his all of a sudden coming back. <laughs> you know, that's, well, that was, that was unnecessary. Maybe he just found himself again because he likes coming in from under center rather than all these formations. What do you think about that? You know, I'll tell you what, I wish we played all our games at night under the lights because it is truly a different quarterback. Um, but I think uh, I think Jeep Chris did a lot of things to really help him this time. And we finally took some shots downfield. Whether we completed them or not, it instantly opened up the run. Hyde wasn't going anywhere the first two, three series of the game. As soon as we took that shot to Bolden and then down to Smith, they had to respect it regardless if we made it or not. And all of a sudden, Hyde's 10, 15, 25, 30-yard runs. You know, I wish we would get away from the first down, we're going to run the ball <laughs> consensus. You know, just come out and throw it to Torrey. Just let him know right away that, hey, we're not afraid of you and we're going after you. Because, I mean, look what can happen. He draws pass interference all the time. He, he led the NFL for two seasons. Let the man do his job. Yeah. I hadn't thought about that. In fact, hasn't he done it each and every game so far that Cap went to him? At least once, if he went to him more than twice? I think that's he's about either the caught it. Yeah. yeah, he's either caught the ball or he's got the pass interference. You know, that's what the good receivers do. I hope Jeep's taking note on that. Because Jeep did open up the playbook just a little bit more. I, I was kind of surprised. Delighted, but I was a little surprised. That playbook may open up a little bit more this weekend. And who knows? We may have more than it five to six plays coming up soon. So <laughs> That sure be nice. I, but, you know, and it was it was good to watch Cap respond and not just collapse after after the Giants went down and scored. And, uh, you know, that interception at the end of the half really kind of got the tide flowing. And, you know, and every time the Giants did something, we marched right down the field. I, you know, I wish we would have burned a little more time at the last time. But, you know, like I said, we're just hoping we can score or we don't want to stall out and then be, you know, be down seven points. So I just wish the defense would have showed up for 90 seconds. <laughs> Nate, with that said, I know you've got a prediction for this weekend. Are we are we going to win this game? We are. I'm going to go. I'm going to go 35-15. Ooh, I like that because we are scoring points now, and that secondary is a little think, weak. I think the offense keeps rolling. Yeah, there's Baltimore's let huge amounts of points up. I think our offense is rolling. Caps comfortable, and I think Mangini goes back to some sort of a man coverage. Um, you know, Bowman's not covering quite as much and letting uh, Reeser and letting Aker and Brock do their thing, be some Johnson, and I think uh, we're going to make it Aaron Lynch. And I, What I've heard, Brooks will be back this week, and he plans on playing. Oh, good. Uh, and that'll be constant pressure. And as far as I'm concerned, Garrett Selleck is the number one tight end on this team. Thank you. And you can tell Vernon Davis. You know, anybody sees Vernon, tell him we said so. Good Lord. And also... The man's given up. You can see it. Yeah, and Reggie Bush is out, so that means Hayne is probably in. <laughs> you know, nine and, uh, yards yeah, on two carries. After what I, well, after the small dose I saw again, um, I think it's time Hayne Hayne is brought to the game. Reggie, this is going to be a constant with Reggie. It's mm -hmm. time. Let let Hayne do it. Yeah. His punts are looking better. He's he's being a lot smarter with his fair catches. He's playing. He's he's seeing the field better, and he can be just as deadly out of the backfield as as Reggie Bush can. But, Nate, on that note, you and I could be as dangerous as Reggie is behind that backfield because we don't necessarily get hurt upon every carry. <laughs> good good call. We, we could probably make it through a game. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be looking forward to this weekend's win. All right, Nate. I can't wait for it. Give me the holla out, man. Three, 
two, one. Niner! I always love the way he does that. <laughs> Thomas! How you What's doing, up, man? That's this I'm question. Good. It's not a good question, because 49er fans, none of us are doing okay. But, you know, I'm just, I guess it's just one of those formalities. Thomas, how you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. Just got off work, you know, considering the, um, the, the circumstances from last night uh. and, the, and the last three weeks ago. Yeah, but... It's been pretty tough. You know, my wife has been pretty proud of me. I've, I haven't been, you know, ripping the cabinets out or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want to do, though? Okay, we're going to put that behind us. What I want to talk about now, we got a game coming up next week with the Ravens, the connection between Harbaugh. There's, there's going to be, I'm thinking there's going to be a lot of blood boiling going on in this game. Harbaugh wants to beat us for his brother. They also, the Ravens have had enough about losing. One and four, the, it's the battle of the one and fours next week. So I'm thinking this game is going to be very interesting. And Joe Flacco has been, if anybody thinks Colin Kaepernick is a problem child, Joe Flacco has been rated the worst fourth quarterback in the league. Now that's nasty. What do you see? What, what, what do you see coming up for us next week with the Ravens? Do you think we can win that game? Well, um, in order for us to do so, Kaepernick is, is going to have to come out big again. You know, as you know, he, he came out again, second half, really tore it up. I, I'm so glad. I'm so proud of him anyway. But um, he's got to test himself one more time. You know, he's got a lot of tests anyway. But to not, in order to win, win that night, you know, he's going to dig down deep. And um, as well as as rest of the team, um, the defense is going to have to come together because if they play that light light they did last night, oh. I don't know if you have a chance. But anyway, Flacco, it's another story though, because you know he's he can he can pick apart a defense in the same way. Yeah, here's the thing, will man genie please make the right adjustments? Because first of all, that's a soft zone and it's not working. What, what would you change? Would you go back to man to man? Well, that's a tough one. You know um, what the what the defense needs to do, and the way I you know I used to play defense, mm -hmm. and we were we had to like we would start out man, but we'd have to like you know uh, be able to switch on the fly. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you know, we had to come out come back out with different looks. You know, because uh, it's a matter of reading the offense, knowing what the you know you know reading the quarterback. You're going back to reading the quarterback, which that was the first thing I ever learned when, you know, the very first things I ever learned. I'm really worried about Bethe. You know, yeah. he, he should have closed in on that last play when that dude caught it, you know, that, that last catch of the game. But anyway, um, back to man. I'd say, you know, man versus um, zone. Still, we got to be able to switch, you know, on the fly. But we need both, in, you know, in, in order to win, I think. Are we still three? Three, four, right now. I, that's what I thought. Good question. Or let's swap. Let's swap. Again, I don't remember. You know what? I don't even know if we can call us a three-four defense anymore. We're a scheme-oriented defense, which means that's pretty flexible. I've seen them stack the line. All of a sudden, we got looks like we got twelve guys standing right on the line of scrimmage. I, I don't get it. Well, I'm watching what they're doing. I'm, it's a confusing thing. I know what he's doing, but I don't know. Can we be defined as a three-four? I don't know. I, it, at times, we are. Uh -huh. So yeah. It's hard to call. You know, now that you said that, I think what we need to do is go back to blitzing. I have not yet seen a, a package of blitzes at all. Not not yet since since, I, since, since I, the Minnesota game. You mean, yeah, yeah. Thomas, next week, what do you see happening? Are we gonna win or lose? And give me what you think the projected score is gonna be. I have to go with my Niners, bro. I mean, I'm a true Niner. I hope. I I really hope. I hope our Niners go. I hope our Niners win that night because, you know, if we can just build off that positivity that we had last night, even though we lost the game, I'd still think that, you know, we're going to have some um, some fire in our bellies and be able to be able to get that um, that Flacco offense. You say the Niners are going to win it. What's going to be the game I, score? I would say, you know, 16-19, 19, 19 uh, you know, what Niners winning at 19 points. Right. I'd, say about that, that, I'd say about as close. All right. <laughs> That's what I want. I gotta give you the three, two, one, so you give me that fearsome warrior cry of the 49ers. Three, two, one. Niners! <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I got, I got to do, I got to do one for you, man. Yeah. Niners. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Thank you, Thomas. Prepare to win this weekend, guys. It's gonna be easier than you think. <laughs> And by the way, if we're meeting for the first time, thank you very much, it's, I'm delighted to meet you. Let me invite you to a post-game online gathering coming up after the game this Sunday. And I'm expecting a big crowd of nothing but excited people. You'll love it. And joining is just as easy as a click. It takes nothing more than that. And as I say, it should be a big party. Come on in and put down your thoughts. And when I say put down your thoughts, I'm not talking about coming in and watching me or anybody else talk and looking for a message board and scribbling down a bunch of thoughts. I'm talking about putting you on the air live, fam. It's easy. It's easy. I'm going to post all the instructions on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You go ahead and get familiar with that. It's easier than you will possibly believe. You'll get a link two hours before the game. That's the only thing you haven't, you're have you not going to get on those instructions. But get familiar with the instructions. Read them up. And as I say, it will be easy as can be. And I'll see you on Sunday. Meanwhile, please subscribe so you know when I come looking for you. You'll hear me knocking. <laughs> hey, hey. Countdown, dude. Where you at, man? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have me. Oh, this is crazy, motherfucker.